Hello, everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas to you from, uh, from me and from, from Jonah. Say hello, Jonah. Say Merry Christmas. Can you see them? No. Anyway, Merry Christmas. Um, it's December the 31st. Do you think, ah, oh, has Christmas gone already? No, it hasn't. We're still here uh, celebrating Christmas uh, at the Church of the Holy Spirit. Um, as a Catholic Church, we celebrate uh, an octave. When, th when feasts are really big in, in the Catholic Church, we celebrate them for eight days, you know, an octave. And so um, today, I think, is the penultimate day of the octave. I think tomorrow, the New Year's Day, January 1st, um, is like the last day of the octave. Uh, it begins on Christmas Day and finishes on New Year's Day. So what that means is that um, in the same way that we celebrate Christmas Day, you know, the intention is that we should do exactly the same for eight days. Now, most of us don't do that, right? So, you know, mostly, you know, uh, you have a big kind of gathering or session or something on Christmas Day itself, and then, you know, everything else is kind of you winding down. But the idea is, is just to keep the feast going because it's such a big and important feast to each one of us. Um, that we should be doing something special every day for like eight days. So anyway, uh, we're coming to the end of the octave and uh, I hope you've had uh, a special time with your, your family, your loved ones. Um, and if you've not been able to be with anybody, you know, to at least uh, connect in some ways, you know. Um, I know that here at the Church of the Holy Spirit, um, all of our masses were nicely attended and nicely celebrated, I think, or at least as best we could. And uh, people seem to in, enjoy being to be to being present. So uh, thank you to everyone for being for being with us during these festive days. And as you can see, as I am speaking to you, I'm passing this plate around, uh, and Jonah knows knows there's food on it, and he's thinking, "Can I have some of this?" And actually, no, you cannot have any of this. But this is just in case anybody's interested. And I know there are some people who are interested. What I have on this plate here is a mince pie yeah a mince pie now on the the fourth sunday of advent i think in one of my homilies i preached about um, mince pies being for me really the taste of christmas um in my homeland and the fact that i had not had a mince pie in about i want to say 10 years maybe because i've not been in wales for christmas in a long time but uh, a dear parishioner here uh for some reason thought I might like mince pies and so and this person makes pin pie, mince pies and so I was brought a mince pie and so I'm going to sample it here right before you mmm and tastes really good it's really nice um I'll talk to you about mince pies in a minute um once I've stopped eating but um it's it's really really nice. Um, so, thank you to my secret Santa, my mince pie Santa. Um, let's talk a minute about mince pies. This is a mince pie, as you can see. It's a pastry crust, and it's filled with sweet meats. It's filled with uh, fruit, basically, and sugar and spices and probably a bit of alcohol. And, and the filling is known commonly, um, it's known officially, it's called mince meat, mince meat, okay? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, is there any meat in that pie? And the fact of the matter is, no, there is not. Mince meat is a category of its own, a filling for a pie, and it's made out of dried fruits like raisins, sultanas, currants, <coughs> and uh, generally like fresh apple usually, and uh, spices like cloves and cinnamon and what have you, and uh, sugar, uh, a bit of, and uh, peel, uh, and then, uh, and, um, and, a, and a touch of alcohol, I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. Uh, and so, and we use that to make uh, pies, pastries, uh, at Christmas time in the United Kingdom. And the origin of the mince pie is the following. Well, it, it started going back into Elizabethan times, you know, so sort of like uh, 16th century, 
you know, late 16th century. Um, and what, what it was, was, um, you know, with uh, sanitation being as it was, uh, and there was no refrigeration, um, you know, we, they couldn't really keep uh, food that fresh. And so when they would make uh, a meat pie, which is kind of a, a bit of a British staple, really, so like to make a pie out of, say, pheasant or, or, um, or game or something like that, if they made a pie with the meat, occasionally the meat, you see, would not be that fresh. In fact, it might be rather going off to the point of being rotten. But rather than waste it, you see, and rather than have people eating unpleasant food, uh, what they decided to do was they started adding to the meat, which was slightly rank, bits of fruit, fruit and sugar and spices, just to to mask, if you like, or to cover, camouflage, the, um, the meat, which was not good. And so it became popular then to make meat pies in that way, uh, by adding fruit to the meat. And in fact, it became so popular after a while that people decided that they no longer really wanted the meat in the pie, they just wanted the bits they added to the pie, which is what they call nowadays mincemeat. The sweet bits were added to the, pe the pastry and they left the meat out. And so it became known as mincemeat. Uh, mince meat. And, and so we make mincemeat pies at Christmas time, or commonly known as mince pies. Uh, and it's sweet and it's um, kind of got a certain hint of spice in it, which t to me just speaks of Christmas and just transports me to my mother's kitchen as a kid, helping her to make mince pies. And then kind of making a mess, probably, and making my own kind of mince pie, you know, how kids are in the kitchen. So that was me. Uh, but it has very fond memories, and it triggers in me Christmas. And so I've been very fortunate this year to have a taste of uh, mince pie from home, well, of, of home, but made by somebody here in, uh, in Chicago. Uh, and I'm extremely grateful. So if you ever get a chance to try a mince pie, try it. Um, this, this mince pie particularly is good because it's not too sweet. Sometimes it can be like really, really sweet. You can't eat much of it. I, I know that I'm going to finish that piece there. And I've got more as well. So, you know, I, 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 yeah, I'll certainly make sure I celebrate eight days worth of uh, Christmas um, in mince pies. Okay, just for you to know that. So anyway, um, there we are. It's the eight days of Christmas. Um, Unlike, you know, what they call the 12 days of Christmas, but that comes from a song. Uh, the only reason it exists is because it comes from a song, because it goes up until 12th night and it counts in the epiphany. But in, in the Catholic Church, we, we celebrate eight days of Christmas and then we move into the Christmas season, which has the important feast of the epiphany and the important feast of the, um, the baptism of the Lord. OK, so... Um, uh, Christmas for us, officially really as Catholics, doesn't really finish, I would say, until the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. That's when we'll be taking the nativity scene out down from outside the church. Um, some other places will push it back further to the Feast of the Presentation, which is in the beginning of February, um, Candlemas, but uh, we don't do that. So baptism is for us the end of, of Christmas. So... Um, so don't take your decorations down just yet. I think I've said to you before, on one occasion, um, uh, in a different place, where I, in the city, and I'd said Mass on Christmas Day, that's right, and then the following morning I got up to do Mass on the 26th, um, Boxing Day, you know, and as I was going into the church, so I, I caught somebody from the corner of my eye, and they were just like pulling the trash into the, the alley from their apartment building, and they had, they had in their hand, you know, uh, a, a natural Christmas tree in one of those Christmas tree bags to, ready to throw in the trash. So for that person, Christmas was over. So it would, they just gave it one day and then they were throwing the tree in the trash. And I thought, oh, that's a shame. You know, when Christmas lasts so long, why, you know, why not make the most of it? So anyway, I always try to make the most of it. However, today being... The 31st of December, there are those that celebrate uh, New Year's, right? Uh, New Year's Eve. And very often, 
you know, especially in non-COVID days, um, it would be a time for partying or having more celebrations as people like to say goodbye to the old and welcome in the new. And different cultures, you know, celebrate that in different ways. Um, I personally, I don't celebrate New Year's really. Um, uh, I will go to Mass tomorrow on the 1st of January because it's a good thing to do. But also, that's an important feast to the Church, you know, Mary, Mother of God. So we, we honor Mary as the Mother of Jesus, the, the Child Jesus. Um, but I, I won't be celebrating tonight. Generally in the past, I've, I usually go to bed quite early anyway, but usually I take an, have an early night on New Year's Eve and, and get up in the morning to greet the New Year. And I do something special then if, if I'm in the mood for it. But I'm not a New Year's sort of reveler. However, I'll tell you a little story because my parents always like to remind me of it. When I was um, 18 years old and I was just about readying to finish high school, I think, and um, uh, my parents had bought me a car. I had a small car, a Renault 5, a small car. And so I used to drive my, fr my friends around everywhere, you know. So we decided on New Year's Eve, uh, when I was 18, that we were going to go down to this pub, you know, which is about 30 miles away from home in the coastal area of Wales. We were going to go to the pub until the pub closed. Uh, and then from there, we were going to see the New Year in on the beach. We were very romantic. I mean, it was South Wales, right? Imagine South Wales in the winter, you know, it, it, we're not in California. But anyway, we decided we were going to go and see New Year's uh, in on the beach and we were going to build a fire. There you are. So that's what we did. I, you know, I was the designated driver and I drove all my mates around and we went to the pub and had a great time. And then from there we went to the beach and uh, it was dark and what have you. And we built a fire, right? I had all this stuff to make a fire on the beach. And so we parked the car close to, you know, the beach itself. And in order so that we could see to make the fire, you know, I switched the lights on for the headlights of the car to show, you know, onto the beach so we could see what we were doing. And so we lit the fire and we sat down and probably singing songs and probably having a drink or something like that. And um, but the thing what I did was we were sat there around this fire uh, and the car lights were still on. And I don't know how long we were there. So we saw the New Year in and it was like, you know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning on New Year's Day. And um, but I didn't th it didn't occur to me to switch the lights off. No. So guess what happened after we were all tired and ready to go home, you know, probably far later than I, I should have been up and about. Um, we got back into the car and I started the car and it wouldn't start because I'd worn the battery down. I mean, you know, um, so the car was the, the battery was flat. Uh, and so um, it was kind of like, oh, what are we going to do now? So we had to leave the car at the beach and we walked up into the nearby village where we were fortunate to find another house, a house there with people who were having a party. Um, and so we, in a, a nice way, gate crashed the party so that I could use the phone uh, to call my dad. So around about two o'clock in the morning, I'm calling my dad you know, from this person's house, uh, uh, asking him if he'll come and get us. And so my father, of course, being the good holy man that he is, has said, of course I will. And so about half past three in the morning, um, he comes and picks us up from this stranger's house where we were having a, you know, we were in there partying, if you like, um, until he came and picked us up. And then he drove us all home and we probably didn't get in till about, you know, five o'clock in the morning. But my, my dad never complained about it. He never complained. I felt terrible. Um, my mother always reminds me um, at Christmas time and New Year's about that kind of episode. But it's the only time really I've ever, I think, intentionally celebrated New Year. And it kind of is certainly memorable but probably not the most successful. So there you are. Whatever you do uh, tonight to celebrate the new year, please do so safely uh, and enjoy. And if it involves, uh, you know, putting the car lights on, make sure you switch the lights off when you've finished. All right.
Um, anyway, tomorrow, as I mentioned, is uh, New Year's Day. It's also the feast of uh, Mary, Mother of God. And we have Mass here at 10 o'clock in the morning. And you're all welcome to join us um, just to bring in the new year and to welcome the new year. Uh, and then almost immediately after that, we're into the Epiphany. Yeah, the Catholic Church, we're not waiting until the 6th of uh, January, which is the traditional date. Because it's like a solemn feast, we, we move those feasts nowadays to, to the Sunday, to the nearest Sunday. So instead of the 6th, we have it actually on the 2nd. So this coming Sunday is the Feast of the Epiphany, or the Feast of uh, the Wise Men, or the Magi, or whatever you want to call it. But, um, so please join us uh, for that celebration here at Church of the Holy Spirit. Um, I could talk more about uh, the Epiphany, but I think I'll save it for next time, because I've talked enough about mince pies, uh, but the mince pies, they're waiting for me to eat it, and I'm anxious to eat it. So for now, I just, again, want to check in with you and say Merry Christmas. I didn't record last week because it was uh, Christmas Eve, and I thought nobody's going to be watching Fridays with Father, and I was also quite busy up to my eyeballs in saying Mass and being festive. Anyway, I continue to be festive, and I ask you to pray for me as I pray for you. Um, please be joyful and keep the faith, and Happy Christmas, as we say in Wales. Nadolig Llawen, as we say in Wales. Bye-bye. <laughs>